Gussy gorillas are a peculiar group of primates that strive to keep each other gussied up and well groomed, not unlike cats or some of the more peculiar raccoons. And it's through this social grooming that these apes remove dirt, insects and debris from all those difficult to reach and difficult to see areas. And some reciprocation would be appreciated, right? In this type of monkey business. In fact, it's rewarded. And yes, I know that gorillas aren't monkeys. This video was made possible in part with the help from Bitewing Games, so know that going in, that this is a paid for preview with what I believe is an advanced prototype of the game. So the usual caveats are out there and the final copy might look a little bit different. It probably won't, but who knows? In Gussie Gorillas, which plays three to 10 plays in around 20 minutes, players are primates who start out with a personal draw pile of face down cards and it's without looking at these cards or the cards in their hands that players simultaneously trade to keep cards, one or two cards at a time. Once all the cards have been traded or kept, players tally their collections and the highest score wins. But there are a few things to know and be careful about that could devastate your standing on the social hierarchy, so let's get into it. Set up for three players, the game will look something like this, only it'll be on your table and not in my house, and you'll shuffle the deck dealing 11 cards face down to each player. And this is crucial as players may not look at their cards. Players then simultaneously pick up the first card in their personal draw pile and hold it facing away from themselves. You won't be able to see your own cards, but everyone else will. Trading then begins immediately as players, I've written chaotically, but I suppose you could do it calmly and organized like some type of British post office, but that was not my experience. As players offer to trade the cards in their hand with anyone else's hand, even when needed extra cards as players may add a second card from their draw pile to their hand to entice others to trade with them. When two players make a trade, they must exchange their entire hand and immediately place a card or cards they receive into their personal face-up pile. That's their collection. If instead, though, a player believes that they are holding a valuable card, perhaps because everyone else at the table wants it real bad-like, they can insta-keep it by placing it directly into their collection face-up instead of trading it away. And while you can't verbally reveal the exact card in another player's hand, you are allowed to, well, the rulebook says, imply truths or lies. But this trade is all about convincing people that they have something that they don't want when it's really something that you want real badly. But if no one wants your card, that means you've got a bad card, right? Although, unless maybe everybody at the table is trying to convince you that you have a bad card, and waiting for you to add something to it because it's actually a good, it's the whole game is like a, it's a hand of micro poker at a stock exchange where everybody is getting paid to lie through their teeth and interrupt, make wild claims, allegations. It's very much open season. Once you've made a trade, you then draw up and it's this free form way that eventually everyone will have either traded or kept all of their 11 cards, which takes you to the scoring. To score, players separate out their special cards and unique number cards in their collection while combining any duplicate numbers into pairs. Really specifically, pairs are number cards of the same card type and final value. You'll be scoring for the face value of your cards once your special cards have been all used up. Pairs are normally bad. They cancel each other out. Remember, these gorillas want unique things and you score nothing for them. But there is an exception with pairs of ones, which instead score 11 points. If you have three of a card, such as three tens, you score 10 points, with one pair being effectively removed from the game and the third single 10 scoring the 10 points. Players have to use all their special cards on their number cards, with a maximum of one special card being used per number card, even if it decreases their score. So let's look at those special cards. A split has to be applied to a pair. It's used to prevent a pair of cards from cancelling each other out. That's good. Or it prevents a pair of ones from comboing into form an 11. If a player's only pairs are ones or a negative pair, they must still use them to split them up, which means they're going to score. 
yeah, some of the cards are negative numbers, so you will want to pair those up with duplicates to get rid of them. A flip must be applied to flippable numbers that have not already been flipped. Flippable numbers, I've said flip a lot, include 2, 6, 7, and 10. They show this rotational arrow as a reminder, and sometimes that's good, and sometimes it's bad. Changing a 2 to a 7, great. A 7 to a 2, not great. A 6 to a 9, or a 10 to a 1. One of the core ideas of these special abilities is that they can be great or they can be terrible. It's really how you use them and how you've managed to negotiate whilst getting them. A reverse makes a positive number negative or a negative number positive. And again, one thing to remember is that a pair are only two cards that are exactly the same. Same number and primate picture. A six and a flipped nine are not a pair. The highest score of the round gets a banana, and the first player to get two bananas wins. For an example, Georgina combines her two ones to gain 11 points. A pair of ones never cancels out. It always just counts as 11 points. Her fours are a pair, so they earn her nothing. She has three tens, and two of them would form a pair and be worth nothing, but she applied the split to the pair and now gains 30 points. The third 10 does not form a pair with either of the split 10s. She used her reverse card on her negative 8 to gain positive 8 points. And she had to use the flip on the flippable number. Thus, she chose to flip the 7 to a 2. So George's total score is 51 points. There are a couple variants to add in. If you like, there's the open showcase variant. It can be even more strategic as players must always display all the cards that they add to their collection. So there's no secrets to what's going on in each gorilla's personal collection. And there are some rare cards that you can also introduce into the game. In a 10 player game, rare cards are always used, but at lower player counts, you can choose to add them in. When including the rare cards, you simply shuffle them into the deck at the start of the game. The 9, this functions exactly the same as any number card, compatible with special cards, they are cancelled out if it's a pair, but during the scoring phase, for each 9 that is not cancelled out, you must discard any two other cards from your collection, which can be really good, or not so good. There's the wild special, this card must be used and applied as a split, a flip, or a reverse and the special sixes make it so that your special cards have no effect you don't apply their effects to any number cards and instead each of your special cards is worth six points and that's it you don't even need a table to play gussie gorillas it's fast at times frantic and deviously strategically deceptive i really think that a lot of people will enjoy this game this last bit they didn't pay me to say i just think it's true. All the details for the Kickstarter campaign are below with links to follow. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.